Back to my favorite. Got a little left. There's not much. Uh, first Nephi kind of ends with a whimper. <laughs> but it starts with a shot. So. Hmm. Sorry, this is just too nice to slam. <laughs> Nothing like a fine single malt. Ah. So, chapter 22. The last chapter of First Nephi. And now, it came to pass after I, Nephi, had read these things which were engraven upon the plates of brass and then added to this gold book. My brethren came unto me and said unto me, What meaneth these things which ye have read? Behold, are they to be understood according to the things that which are spiritual, which shall come to pass according to the spirit not the flesh. Speaking of spirit, this doesn't pour too good. It's an old fashioned bottle. That's why I was drinking straight from the bottle. Hate to waste any. Starting to like this chapter. <laughs> Come to pass according to the Spirit, not the flesh. And I, Nephi, said unto them, Behold, they are manifest unto the prophet Isaiah by the voice of the Spirit. For by the Spirit all things are made known unto the prophets which shall come unto the children of men according to the flesh. So, he's kind of answering. <laughs> Wherefore, the things of which I have read are things pertaining to, to things both temporal and spiritual. For it appears that the house of Israel, sooner or later... <laughs> will be scattered upon the face of the earth and also among the nations. Well, you know, you just crossed a, a, an ocean, so you can't go back to Jerusalem for more supplies anyway. Or another family to abduct or some more documents, metallic documents to steal. <laughs> and behold, there are many who are already lost from knowledge of those who are at Jerusalem. So don't know where, what happened to some of these tribes. Yea, the most part of all the tribes have been led away, and they are scattered to and fro upon the isles of the sea. And whither they are, and whither they are, none of us knoweth, save that we know that they have been led away. And since they have been led away. These things have been prophesied concerning them and also concerning all those who shall hereafter be scattered and be confounded because of the Holy One of Israel, for against him will they harden their hearts. Wherefore they shall be scattered among all the nations and shall be hated of all men. Nevertheless, after they shall be nursed by the Gentiles. That's what the Gentiles been doing, nursing them. See, <laughs> wasn't Hitler a Gentile? You know, those Catholic Gentiles? We have to repeat that he was Catholic over and over again. Otherwise, he by default instantly becomes an atheist because he did something bad. He did a whole bunch of bad things. And we know that no Christian could do a bad thing. So... Something's wrong with history somehow, and it just needs to be ignored. <laughs> yeah, nursed by the Gentiles. And the Lord has lifted up his hand upon the Gentiles and set them up for a standard. Put them on a pedestal, won't you? 
and their children have been carried in their arms, and their daughters have been carried upon their shoulders. Behold, these things of which are spoken are temporal. For thus are the covenants of the Lord with our fathers, and it meaneth, uh, and it meaneth us in the days to come. Who are you talking to, Nephi? It meaneth us. You're not Gentiles. You sure this isn't Joseph Smith talking to his Mormon pals? It meaneth us, Gentiles, on a pedestal, Latter-day Saints. <sighs> meaneth us in the days to come, and also all our brethren who are of the house of Israel. So they, they're included if they want to join in. They just got to, you know, believe that Jesus died for them and it's their fucking fault because they're Jews. And we all know the Jews killed Jesus. Those poor Romans, they were forced to do it. They didn't want to do it. Man, they didn't even pick out that sign, uh, King of the Jews, that was put above his cross. No, the Romans didn't do that as a sick joke. No, the Jews did it because we don't know why they would do that. Anyway, uh, but it makes sense if you don't think about it. All right. And after our seed is scattered, the Lord God will proceed to do a marvelous work among the Gentiles, which shall be great, a great, wait, which shall, which shall be of great worth unto our seed. Wherefore, it is likened unto their being nourished by the Gentiles. Because Nephi's seed is going to be wiped out long before they meet any Gentiles. You know, unless the Lamanites automatic, you know, automatically became Gentiles by default. This only makes sense if it's a guy in the 1820s writing this. And being carried in their arms and upon their shoulders. That's what Isaiah literally meant. What Joseph Smith just said he meant. Because he needs it to mean that. And it shall also be of worth unto the Gentiles... And not only unto the Gentiles, but unto all the house of Israel, unto the making known of the covenants of the Father of heaven, unto Abraham, saying, In thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Thank you. Thanks, Abe. And I would, my brethren, that he's, that's Nephi still talking to his brethren, explaining why he just read two, you know, chapter 48 and 49 of Isaiah to him. <laughs> They're like, okay, bunch of words. What does it mean? <laughs> They're just simple folk, you know? That's why they're evil. They don't get it, so they're going to get it. <sighs> and I would, my brethren, that ye should know that all of the kindreds of the earth cannot be blessed unless he shall bear his arm in the eyes of the nation. You, do, you just got to die, Jesus. That's all there is to it. You've got to. You can't, you know. Uh -uh. <laughs> it's important. Ah, Jesus. Wherefore, the Lord God will proceed to make bare his arm in the eyes of all nations and bring upon his covenants and his gospel unto those who who are of the house of Israel. So they've got to become, you know, Christians, the Jews. It's a, no problem, right? You don't have to wait for the Messiah anymore. You just have to wait for him to come back. But you could at least take comfort and know, knowledge that he actually already showed up. So now we're waiting for him to come back. You were just waiting for him to show up in the first place, the Jews. See, they're just so deluded, aren't they? Wherefore, he will bring them out of captivity, because we know the Jews are supposedly living in under Nebuchadnezzar's iron heel, you know, and becoming Babylonians and all that for like a generation or two. And they shall be gathered together in the lands of their inheritance. They go back to Jerusalem. And they shall be brought out of obscurity and out of darkness, and they shall know that the Lord is their Savior and their Redeemer, the Mighty One of Israel. Sure got a lot of titles. And the blood of that great and abominable church, 
but I don't know who they're talking about. Who might that be? Let's see, a great and abominable church, probably the, one of the earliest, well, one of the oldest ones. It's become all ritualized and silks and golds and harlots. I don't know. Do they mean little school kids or some crazy sick shit like that? I'm going to just say perversion. <laughs> Get it over with. <sighs> Abominable church. Disgusting. Ugh. Ugh. We hate this church. Which is the whore of all the earth. Shall turn upon their own heads. Isn't that funny? You know, you got to feminize it to make it the ultimate insult. Good as gold. For they shall war among themselves. And the sword of their own hand shall fall upon their own heads. Now we're quoting from Proverbs, I believe. If I remember right, that's one of my favorite books. Shall fall upon their own heads, and they shall be drunken with their own blood. Mmm, yummy. And every nation which shall war against thee, O house of Israel, shall be turned one against another, and they shall fall into the pit which they digged to ensnare the people of the Lord. And all that fight against Zion shall be destroyed, and that great whore who hath perverted the right ways of the Lord. Could they be talking about, oh, I don't know, Catholic book. <sighs> Who hath perverted the right ways of the Lord? Yea, that great and abominable church shall tumble to the dust, and great shall be the fall of it. For behold, saith the prophet, apparently Isaiah instead of Nephi, the time cometh speedily that Satan shall have no more power over the hearts of the children of men. For the day soon cometh that all the proud and they that do wickedly shall be as stubble. And the day cometh that they must be burned. For the time soon cometh that the fullness of the wrath of God shall be poured out upon all the children of men. For he will not suffer that the wicked shall destroy the righteous. Yeah, they, they just... So yeah, that's why we see burning churches everywhere, you know. And Christians hiding in their basements. You know, because they're just so persecuted, and there's such a long history of that. I mean, even the Roman persecutions is kind of in question now. Not trying to be a Holocaust denier or anything. <sighs> Wherefore, he will preserve the righteous by his power, even if it so be that the fullness of his wrath must come, and the righteous be preserved even unto the destruction of their enemies by fire. Wherefore, the righteous need not fear. Yeah, they sure don't have to worry about a thing. Thus saith the prophet, they shall be saved, even if it be as by fire. Damn, goddamn pyromaniac God. You're a goddamn pyromaniac. Behold, my brethren, I say unto you that these things must shortly come, any day now. Didn't Jesus say that too? Any moment. Don't even let the bread rise. You know. <laughs> Don't bother having kids. Woe unto you with children in the last days. They don't quote that here. I guess they don't get that message. So they just crap them out like bunnies. Because they want to outbreed everybody if they can't outconvert everybody. <laughs> and vapor of smoke must come, and it must needs be upon the face of this earth, and it cometh according to the flesh, if it be that they will harden their hearts against the Holy One of Israel. For behold, the righteous shall not perish, for the time surely must come. Mm, close that all they who fight against Zion shall be cut off. And the Lord will surely prepare a way for his people unto the fulfilling of the words of Moses, which he spake, saying, A prophet shall the Lord unto a Lord your God raise up unto you like me. 
like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things, wherefore he shall, he shall say, Pass, that all those who will not hear that prophet shall be cut off from among the people. God, they're teasing me. And now I, Nephi, declare unto you that this prophet, of whom Moses spake, was the Holy One of Israel, wherefore he shall execute judgment in righteousness. And the righteous need not fear, for they are those who shall not be confounded. Yeah, their minds are set in stone. The Rock of Ages, apparently. <sighs> Great when you go swimming. <laughs> but it is the kingdom of the devil which shall build up among the children of men, which kingdom is established among them, which are in the flesh. For the time speedily shall come that all churches which are built up to get gain, and all those who are built up to get power over the flesh, and those who are built up to become popular in the eyes of the world, that disgusting, despicable world that we live in, and those who seek the lusts of the flesh and the things of the world and to do all manner of iniquity, yea, in fine, all those who belong to the kingdom of the devil are they who need fear and tremble and quake they are those who must be brought low in the dust. They are those who must be consumed as stubble. And this is according to the words of the prophet. And the time cometh speedily that the righteous must be led up as calves of the stall. And the Holy One of Israel must reign in domain, dominion and must and might and power, and great glory. And he gathereth his children from the four quarters of the earth, that flat, square-shaped earth, apparently. Maybe it's a rectangle. It's got four corners. <sighs> and he numbereth his sheep. And that's his mark. <laughs> and they know him. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. And he shall feed his sheep, and in him they shall find pasture. Bah. And because of the righteousness of his people, Satan hath no power, wherefore he cannot be loosed for a space of many years. For he hath no power over the hearts of the people, for they dwell in righteousness, and the Holy One of Israel reigneth. And now, I be, and now behold, I, Nephi, say unto you that all these things must come according to the flesh. But behold, all nations, kindreds, tongues, and people shall dwell safely in the Holy One of Israel, if it be that they will repent. And now I, Nephi, make an end, for I durst not speak further as yet concerning these things. Wherefore, my brethren, I would that ye should consider that the things which have been written upon the plates of brass are true. You must have like a court stenographer sitting, you know, nearby, taking it all down. That's why we ended up accidentally getting two books of Isaiah here when they already have the place of brass and the Mormons already have their King James, since apparently they don't care for Joseph Smith's uh, retranslated Holy Bible, his restored Holy Bible, which they don't use. <laughs> and they testify that a man must be obedient to the commandments of God. So ladies, you're off the hook. How about that? <laughs> Just kidding. Wherefore, ye need not suppose that I am and my father are the only ones that have testified. Yeah, there's a whole bunch in uh, this book also. They never mention any of the people from this book, though. Just ironic, you know. I think Lehi, at least, 
deserves favorable mention for you know his involvement in a murder of a, a relative. Wherefore, my brethren, I would that you should consider that the things which have been written upon the plates of brass are true, and they testify that a man must be obedient to the... Sorry, I read that already. Uh, wherefore, ye needs not suppose that I and my father are the only ones who testified and also taught them. Wherefore, if ye shall be obedient to the commandments and endure to the end, ye shall be saved at the last day. And thus it is. Amen. Well, that's the end of First Nephi. And, uh, you know, fuck the shot glass. Oh, just needed one more. I just, I earned it. Anyway, I guess I'll see all of you in Second Nephi 2. But I thought it was very nice that our boy Nephi clarified what Isaiah meant in those two stolen chapters. Expect more Isaiah in chapter 2. I don't know if I'm going to read all of that. I mean, I'll, I'm going to go over it, and i got to think a little more carefully in the next chapter. But, you know, like I said, if you're expecting the Swiss Family Robinson or the, you know, the birth of a nation, you know, uh, it just sort of like is there suddenly, and they must spend more time daydreaming about apocalyptic imagery and, you know, and then explaining what they mean. So, see you in chapter two, and take care, folks. Peace.